Hello dear algorithm traders. In today's video, you will learn how to protect yourself from the big players. We check whether there are clear pattern sequences in the price, and I am introducing a new candle that brings you significantly more information, while at the same time saving 33% in time. First of all, thank you very much for all of your private feedback that has reached me. I am very happy that the information helps you, and that you can optimize and improve your probability of winning. In the last few weeks there have been more and more inquiries about how I have optimized my approach over the past few years. I would like to go into that. For over 11 years I have been a professional forex trader exclusively in Eurist. I started very early to identify the market according to supply and demand zones in order to derive a trading advantage from it. In the first two years I lost a maximum of $2,000, and I was able to break even after two years. The step from break-even to a profitable trader was the toughest hurdle, and trading in equilibrium helped me a lot. Over 70% of the courses take place within an equilibrium, which is why I have specialized in it. The big players' collection campaigns take place within an equilibrium, which is exactly where I was always able to carry out my successful trading in a relatively predictable range. In the last 11 years I have learned a lot about the approach of the big players, this information is crucial for me today. Exactly three years ago I published an outlook on the future course of the Euro-Swiss franc on my blog at Forex Factory. For this purpose, I have drawn a resistance zone, with the assumption that the price could go sharply down there. Three months later, the price actually hit this resistance zone, and then went down 1500 pip within two years. I also had a resistance zone at 1.25500 in the Euro-US dollar. This resistance zone was actually reached and the price moved within an equilibrium for almost three months before it finally turned down. My estimate was 1.17, but I was wrong and I never expected that the course would run to 1.09 over two years. From my point of view, long-term forecasts are purely a matter of luck and have nothing to do with knowledge or ability. In recent years I have noticed that many traders go to forums every day to get the opinion of other traders on a particular currency pair. Imagine you are in such a forum and want to find out where the Euro-Swiss franc is going today. 32 participants claim that the Swiss franc will rise and 2 participants that the Swiss franc will fall. What will your trade be like for this day? Basically, we know that the masses are always wrong, so one should rather bet on a falling Swiss franc. In all honesty, what use is it to you if you know that a certain currency pair is going up, for example? Then you still don't know when it will rise and whether or not there will be stop hunting beforehand. Every trader trades at their own risk, which is why I would never rely on the opinion of others. Some fraudsters have taken advantage of this uncertainty of traders. The following story is not an invitation to cheat, but a sad example of a cheater who has been exposed. The fraudster obtained 96,000 email addresses from traders through address traders. 48,000 traders received an email stating that Apple shares would rise in the next week, and the other 48,000 received information that Apple shares would fall. At the end of the week the price went up, eliminating the addresses that the fraudster had predicted a falling price. In the second week the 48,000 emails were shared again, and this went on for a total of five weeks. In the end, there were 3,000 traders left who received correct price forecasts five times in a row. Incidentally, the chance that you are right five times in a row with a 50% probability is 3%. Now the fraudster tried to convince half of the 3,000 traders to pay 0.024 bitcoins for these correct price forecasts and the fraudster could even have become a millionaire with it. The fraud attempted in this case failed because some of the people who were contacted received two different predictions from the fraudster at the same time and filed charges. Not every unsuccessful trader is a cheat, but a cheat is definitely an unsuccessful trader. In trading, I would rather let a big player steal my money than a fraudster. With the big player I would have at least a small chance of winning. With the cheater, I can basically only lose. But it is often not that easy to identify fraud. Basically, the stock market is a major challenge. 
You can compare the forex or future market with Monopoly, only at the end of the game do you realize your mistakes. Worldwide there are approximately 5 million private traders who dream of becoming successful. Unfortunately, according to statistics, only 2% or 100,000 traders will be able to make a living from it. 3% or 150,000 traders will be able to earn a little extra income. Every trader has different approaches. One works with a fundamental analysis, the other with a technical analysis. There are scalpers, day traders and swing traders. Everyone trades in their preferred stocks, currency pairs, indicators or commodities. There are breakout, pullback and trend following strategies. And there are different brokers in the forex, future and stock market. No matter how different the approaches may be, the traders are united by a common goal to win the trade. And there is one other point where the dealers are alike as well. All use entry and exit signals. There are millions of different auxiliary indicators in our market. Around 99% of all retail trailers use indicators for their entry or exit signals. Now some of you will say that you don't use any indicators at all for trading, let's see if this statement can be left as it is. Here we see a normal candlestick chart, and that is actually an indicator that is calculated from the price and the time. Normally we would only get this price information from the broker. Our chart translates this price information into different candles. Of course the candlestick chart is the fastest indicator in the forex market, but it is definitely an indicator. The time and sales list and the DOM also provide various indicators that are calculated from bid and ask. I would like to come back briefly to the principle of causality. The only cause for a price movement is the fact that the market orders run into the limit orders. This is followed by the price information from which the candle is ultimately formed. This means that the price is the result of the bid and ask. Due to a fixed time unit, the candle is nothing more than a random product of price and time. So we have to differentiate between cause indicators that are generated from stock market data and effect indicators that are calculated from price data. Now we come to a very elementary and important point. There are no patterns in the price or in the candles. There are also no clear patterns in the cathedral or in the time and sales list. I took the trouble to do some calculations to prove to you that there are no samples in the price or in the candles. As of today there are 600 monthly candles in the euro US dollar. The chart is now over 50 years old and contains almost 26 million M1 candles. My claim is that there are no specific patterns within these candles. Now let's see if this claim is true. For the experiment I carried out two different pattern searches. The first pattern search only refers to the same price. On the left you can see an M1 candle, the low price is 1.20100, the open price is 1.20110, the close price is 1.20130 and the high is 1.20140. My task now was to determine how many M1 candles there are that have exactly the same price. First of all, I selected an equilibrium range from the last two months in order to achieve the highest possible price agreement. Over 65,000 M1 candles were analyzed during this period. It started on November 18, 2020 at 3.36 p.m. Here is the column for the open, high, low, and close. In the total OHLC column, I just added the four values. Since we are looking for matching candles, both should have the same total OHLC value in the end. Next, the total OHLC value was sorted according to size and then divided into individual columns. Identical columns mean that there may be matching candles here. We recognize that the same values arose at different points in time. Let's take a closer look at these now. The red fields mark matches in the respective columns. There would have to be at least two columns with four matches each for the same candle to be identified. That is not the case. Here. After all, there is an identical open and high twice, but unfortunately the low and close do not. Match. There is also no match in the next column section. To do this, let's create a rough probability calculation. The highest price was 1.23490, 
and the lowest price was 1.17995. That is a total of 5,495 pipettes. Since there are four different candle values, we would have to raise these 5,495 pipettes to the power. That brings us to over 911 trillion possibilities. However, the possibilities are clearly limited due to the candle conditions, so I would only like to calculate with 100 million possibilities here. We now have to put this value in relation to 65,000 candles. In the euro jackpot, the probability of a direct hit is around 100 million. In order to achieve matching candlestick values, the probability is 1 in 5 billion. This means that the probability of reaching two identical candlesticks within this period is 50 times more difficult than achieving a direct hit in the euro jackpot. We got stuck with the same price, so we're referring to the same size now. The probability should be significantly higher to find candles that are the same size within this period. We take the same data again and add another column to differentiate between bullish, bearish and doji candles. The upper wick always receives a minus value, the candle body a minus, plus or neutral value. And the lower wick is always worth a plus. This again results in a total value in the addition. Now we sort the total value according to size and display it in a distribution diagram. In the distribution diagram, it is noticeable that the values do not have a concrete uniform distribution. This is because we had more upward movements during the period and the overall result is more bullish. The last column was sorted and there were a total of over 200 identical results with the number 32. Here we see that there were 12 identical bullish candles that were 3.2 pips in size during the period. Candle wicks were not created because open and low as well as high and close matched. These 12 candles actually came into being at different times. I transferred the first candlestick value to the column and added the following 6 candles to identify a possible pattern sequence. I then continued that for all 12 candles. We see the first candle of 3.2 pips, and then six candles that were made after that. It is noticeable here that the first candle is significantly smaller in proportion. But that's only because the orange candle is 14 pips in size. The proportions are simply adjusted. In conclusion, we can also state here that there are no clear pattern sequences. All gradients after that are purely random and not uniform. Basically, we can assume that a candle is a purely coincidental product that arises from the price and the time. A match here would be purely coincidental. This means that with regard to the possible use of effect indicators in the forex market, the indicators are calculated from the price, so that the resulting result would also be entirely random. There are around 60,000 retail traders in Germany, Switzerland and Austria, 50,000 of whom trade in the forex market. Since the candle is the fastest indicator in the forex market, it can be assumed that these 50,000 forex traders also work with candles. There are big differences in the field of candles, we know the normal candle chart, tick chart, Renko chart, or Heiken Ashi. When I started trading 11 years ago, I initially had great problems extracting crucial information from a candle display. A candle offers four information points open, high, low and close. The high and low are always the same for both candles, while with a bullish candle the close is always above the open, it is exactly the other way around with the bearish candle. Because the candles didn't get me anywhere, I dealt with the candle formations at the time. We see a doji here, but the course continued to decline. The next doji didn't change the trend either, here was no doji, and a trend change anyway, another doji, but no trend change, the next doji didn't bring a good result either. I was wondering why the upper wick of a bullish candle was also marked in green, because it was obviously a pullback. In the same way, from my point of view, the lower wick of a bearish candle should have been drawn in green, as the price was pushed up again from low to close. In 2014, for example, I developed a candle display, where the upper wicks were basically red and the lower wicks were green. Here in this downward movement, you can clearly see that the proportion of bearish movements clearly predominates but in principle this representation did not bring me any greater advantage either. 
Another decisive point for me was the movements within the candle, at point of we see that the price first went from open to low, then to high and finally back to close. So 50 pip bullish movement minus 20 pip bearish movement results in a total bullish movement of 30 pips. In case B, the price runs from open directly to high, then to low and back up to close. The result is again a bullish movement of 30 pips, with a bearish candle, it is exactly the opposite. The question is which movement sequence is more bearish, for that we have to analyze the movement sequence more precisely. The movement sequence is 28.6% bullish and 71.4% bearish, while the movement sequence B is 38.5% bullish and 61.5% bearish. The sequence of movements A is thus more bearish than the sequence of movements B. The bionic candle ultimately emerged from my different ideas. Here you can see the difference to a normal candle, and it is noticeable that the bionic candle does not have a open. The decisive point with the bionic candle is that the last move, shortly before the close, is particularly emphasized. For me this is the last decisive movement. Now let's get to the strength calculation of the normal candle, the price runs from open to low and back to open again. For this reason, this movement is rated neutrally. The price continues upwards to the later close point, then 10 pip high and 10 pip close. This movement is also rated neutrally. With the bionic candle, the price runs from open to low and then to high. Because the price overcomes the open, the lower movement is not neutral for me but rather bullish. Then there is a small pullback from the high to the close, that is the last movement within the candle and for this reason this movement is not neutral for me either. Thus there are only two movements in the bionic candle, but they are not neutral. Now let's calculate the resulting strength. With a normal candle, the strength is determined by the candle body, in this case it is 50%. The candle body of the bionic candle is significantly larger, as the lower area is rated bullish. In this case it is 75%. Let us now compare that with the actual sequence of movements. The normal candle has a deviation of 17%, while the bionic candle only achieves a deviation of 8%. That's a 50% better value. Here we see again a normal candle display compared to the bionic candle. The colors and the width are of course individually adjustable, here the candle body is gray and the pullbacks are highlighted, here only the pullbacks are shown, here the pullbacks are gray and the candle body is highlighted, and at the end we see the pure direction of movement. As you can see, this is a very flexible, adjustable candle. Now we come to my preferred setting of the bionic candle. Here we see a concrete comparison between the normal candle and the bionic candle. Compared to the candle charts, the bionic chart is much clearer and clearer, but the highlighting of the pullbacks takes a bit of getting used to at the beginning. Let's look at a small example of this. Price came from above, and we are seeing a strong bullish pullback. The next bearish candle also shows this bullish pullback. The price is initially going up, but the bears seem to have something against it. This movement that we see here is a stop hunting. The next candle shows a clear bearish weakness, this upward candle shows no strength yet, but with the downward movement we see that the bulls have a clear advantage here. We see a strong upward movement as a reaction, which will continue in the future. In the subsequent upward movements we can now see how the bearish objections are getting stronger and stronger, which now leads to a stronger downward movement. The following candle is very strong and triggers further downward movements. First there are a few bullish objections, and another stronger downward movement, but the bullish problem here is so big that it results in an upward movement. The next upward movement is so strong that it continues for the next few candles. This example shows what incredible information we can only pull out of a candle. The biggest advantage however, is to find the crucial key candle that shows us the clear turning points. In the lower indicator it is possible for me to show the normal candle chart side by side, unfortunately this view is very confusing. Since the bionic candle only contains two movements, the candles placed next to one another are much easier to identify. 
We can also see that the bullish pullbacks are significantly stronger within a downward movement, while the bearish pullbacks are advantageous in an upward movement. Here we see a chart image from 1988, when the Eurist rates looked relatively unclear. With the bionic candle, unclear courses are presented much better, which is clearly an advantage if you are on the move in small units of time. Here you can see another example where I have shown the bionic candle in all nine time units side by side. That gave me a much better overview then. With the normal candle, of course, I also use the bionic candle in my future charts, as they give me a deeper insight. Let's briefly summarize the advantages of the bionic candle again. This saves you 33% in time, the decisive pullbacks are highlighted, we have a clear price chart, the candle width and the colors can be flexibly adjusted, we have a better overview of bulls and bears, of course there is also a better overview, if if we put the candles next to one another, there is a quicker overview overall, the effective strength of the candle can be identified immediately. The last movement is highlighted, so that easier areas of resistance can be identified. Trend reversals are easier to localize, the information is reduced to the essentials, and the very decisive point is, there is no change in price compared to the normal candle like for example in the Heiken Ashi, which is calculated from the last close. Of course you will receive my latest version of the bionic candle. In my description you will find a link to Forex Factory, where you can download the indicators shown in the picture for free. In addition, I created a template for the MT4 for you. Imagine you drive this street every day to get to work. One day the road is blocked by a construction site. What will you do? You will take a detour to get to work. At the beginning, this detour is very time-consuming and unfamiliar, but over time you get used to it, and this detour may even be faster. This means that if you are not getting the results in trading that you would like to achieve, you have to take a different path. Let's now take a look at the tools we can use to avoid the big players in the future so that we don't get stopped unnecessarily. To do this, we will first do a small experiment. A friend of yours wants to push a homemade paper airplane down from the top floor of a high-rise building. You yourself stand in front of the skyscraper and now have to assess where this paper plane could land. Your friend starts the paper plane, and after a few turns it happens to land right in front of your feet. Let's assume you have to make a prediction at points A, B or C where the paper plane will land. At what point is the most likely that your prediction is correct? The correct answer would be point C, as this is where you can best determine the possible landing radius. The further you look into the future, the less accurate your predictions will be. The closer you get to the present, the more accurate your predictions will be. If we look at a normal chat history, we find that we are only looking at the past. But we have just seen that there are no samples in the price or in the candles. This eliminates the possibility of making a price forecast for the future from the past. The present is relatively small in relation to the past. And the future is still completely unclear. But since our profits can only be produced in the future, we usually have to deal with this more intensely. But in the future we would only have a black screen and possible predictions would be very uncertain. Since the future is unpredictable, we should focus on the present. We know from the paper airplane experiment, the closer we orientate ourselves to the present, the more precise our predictions will be. First of all, I can give every Forex trader the recommendation to take a closer look at the stock market data because these are the best indicators worldwide that traders can work with in order to make trading decisions. We have already seen that cause indicators are significantly more efficient than effect indicators, as these only represent the result, and you cannot see the actual cause of the price change. Imagine a woman standing under an apple tree with a basket in her hand. She looks up into the crown of the tree and sees someone cutting an apple. With this information she is able to catch the apple in her basket, and it is precisely this information that we receive with the stock exchange data. Let's compare that with the Forex market data. Here the woman does not see that someone is cutting the apple. So the apples fall down randomly. The probability of catching an apple is of course much more difficult here. It becomes particularly dramatic when one tries to predict a regular sequence of when and where an apple could fall. 
and it is precisely from this data that EAs are now constructed in the Forex market, which should bring a trader regular profits. If we had to compare this EA with the big player algorithms, it would look something like this. No big player in the world is fully automated, and if the EAs worked, the big players could save billions of dollars and lay off all analysts and traders. We should ask ourselves why this will never happen. Let's look at a few facts again. Whereby I would like to refer exclusively to the euro US dollar in the forex market. The fact is that only the big players dominate this market. They lure the retailers permanently into the trap in order to record their volume with their limit orders. In my last videos I showed you that the limit orders are significantly stronger than the market orders and that the limit orders can be better hidden with the help of the iceberg orders. The big players also use the market orders exclusively to push the price into the stops. The fact is that there are no patterns in the price or in the candles, and there are also no clear patterns in the DOM or in the times and sales list. But there are special filter sequences that can be used to make these patterns visible. The big players don't have many opportunities to realize their profit. As a rule, you collect within an equilibrium, push the price upwards and get out in the ongoing movement upwards. If there is not enough volume in the market, you are able to make volume available to yourself in order to achieve your goals more quickly. Another way to realize profits is to simply push the price in the desired direction. We have been able to observe this situation in the euro US dollar over the past few weeks. Until I know where the market is going, I am not ready to enter into a trade. For this reason I have created a kind of navigation map, where I can see exactly when the big players collect ask or bids or get out of their position. To do this, you have to concentrate exclusively on the limit orders. Of course, a market order always triggers a corresponding limit order at the same time. But not every limit order is used to collect. And that's why you have to precisely identify the limit orders that are decisive for future price development. On the left side we see all limit orders that have arisen in the market in a delta display. In addition, we see the decisive limit deltas which, in my opinion, trigger a future course relevance. I work with special filter settings that show me the accumulated orders that were accepted by the big players within 1 slash 1000 of a second. A distinction must also be made here between cumulative orders that are accepted by the limit orders and cumulative market orders that are submitted, which are used to push the market into the decisive stops. Here you can see, for example, a chart where the cumulative orders relevant to me were created within half an hour. This overview is useless for me because I have to group the orders at certain price levels. The problem with this, cumulative orders are only shown independent of time. Nevertheless, I have succeeded in converting this time-independent representation into a regular time representation. For example, here you can see all limit deltas that were created in 15 minutes. Below that, I have broken down the filtered limit deltas that are relevant to me and, although the display is independent of time, converted it into a quarter of an hour. At first glance, there doesn't seem to be much difference, but on closer inspection it looks a little different. First of all, we can see that the course is going up. Strong ask was bought again in the yellow box, which ensured that the price continued to rise. Ask was also bought heavily for the blue arrow. From this one could have concluded that the price would have continued to rise and possibly would have taken a long position. Now let's look at the special filtered display. We see that the big players didn't buy a euro here, they bought the dollar. That would have made me a short rather than a long position at this point. Here too, we believe that the euro has been bought heavily. In my filtered representation, we see that the dollar was bought. In the last example it is a bit unclear because first the dollar and then a strong euro were bought. In my filtered representation you can clearly see that only the dollar was bought. I think you can see how important it is to get the right information about the current market situation. Because only those can react correctly who also have concrete market data. You are probably now able to see my main trading screen a little better. At the top left you can see my navigation map, where my specially filtered limit orders are listed. Below is my stop card, here I can see immediately when the retail trader's stops are triggered. 
Below I can see which positions the retail traders enter the market with. At the top right I can see the strength of the limit orders and below that the strength of the market orders. In addition, my tones. Give me information that is not yet shown on the screen. In the middle you can see my trading screen. In the Forex market. To the right of this, important spoofing information and below that, when an equilibrium is created in the market orders. An equilibrium always means uncertainty and is a possible indication of a trend reversal. Open interest is also a very crucial point, unfortunately most traders do not get this important information. But with a little trick you can still do it. The information from my trading screen has the sole purpose of showing me at any time where we are in this market segment. This makes it much easier for me to foresee the next step for the big players. So I can primarily act with it rather than react. Although the algorithms of the big players are very complex and laboriously written, it is still possible to read and identify them in order to generate a trading advantage from them. Of course, these algorithms are updated regularly, but these are often just small changes that don't have a big impact on me. Nevertheless, the algorithms should be checked and adjusted at any time. With a Formula One car that is 10 years old, you would no longer have a chance in today's Formula One. The market changes every second and that's why you have to adapt your trading strategies to the changed algorithms at any time. Algorithms can only be read out cleanly if you work with the fastest programming language that effectively implements very complex sorting functions. Here you can see, for example, two representations that do not yet exist anywhere in the world. These are some projects that we are currently working on in order to read out the algorithms faster than anyone else will be able to. This will result in a new DOM and a completely new time and sales list in the future, which reveals a completely new information architecture to a retailer. It's unbelievable what you can do with C++, especially when you have such creative ideas. At first glance, my approach looks very complicated and expensive, although I only have to pay 45 euros a month for my exchange software and my data feed. That's a joke for the benefit. On the other hand, if you calculate the losses that a part-time trader has to put up with every year, these additional costs are quickly recovered. Therefore you should never ask yourself what a thing costs, but what you can save as a result. Let's summarize again, you saw today that there are definitely no patterns in the price or in the candles and how important the stock market data is. With my free bionic candle you will receive significantly more information in 33% less time. You could also see how important the limit orders are for future trading decisions. With the help of the algorithms, one can penetrate the market surgically precisely and achieve very high profit rates with low risk at the same time. From our point of view, the year 2021 will make history if we manage to present the incoming information. So clearly that a retail trader can protect himself from the attacks of the big players even more easily. And that has nothing to do with creativity and speed. From the bottom of my heart I wish you a successful deal, best regards Michael.